Uh, hey, Loki, you look great. What's your question? And I want to just no? tell you, Loki, and everybody else, I know we've been talking about the squicker walkers, and if you have squicker walker questions, you're going to make my day, but you're also allowed to ask questions about anything else that I've done in my career. <laughs> Except I will have to be a bad cop and jump in if you guys ask any spoilery questions. So, uh, you know, just let's avoid those, all right, in advance. All right, Loki, you're up. So, Miss Lily, I just want to say it's an honor to be talking to you. That is, that sounds weird. <laughs> and um, that your last movie, that wasp, your awesomeness. And maybe I'm talking crazy here, but it would have been lost without you. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> well done, well done. Well done. So my question is, um, can you tell me about the casting process and uh, what your first impression of the script was and how your character stood out to you? For Ant-Man and the Wasp? Uh, yes, for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Well, um, I was just finishing up on my press tour for The Hobbit when uh, my manager called me and said, um, I got a call from Marvel and um, they're wondering if you might want to meet and see if this new franchise, Ant-Man, might be appealing to you. And I laughed. <laughs> and I said, have they run out of superheroes and now they're making them up? Because <laughs> I'd never heard of Ant-Man. I thought it was, a, I genuinely thought it was a joke. And then he was like, no, 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 this is like, he's one of the original Avengers. This is, this is the real thing. And um, so then I was like, well, the truth is, I was just a super elf. I don't really need to be a superhero. And he goes, hang on, hear me out. Ant-Man will be played by Mr. Paul Rudd, and it will be director, directed by the Edgar Wright. And I was like, hold the phone. Who is making this movie? This sounds awesome. And why is a superhero gonna be Paul Rudd? And why is Edgar Wright directing it? I love this. What is happening in my life? And then I said, okay, I have to do some homework. I need to watch a Marvel movie <laughs> and find out what these cool dudes are up to because they sound really cool. So then I spent a weekend, I think I watched six Marvel movies in one weekend and was like, I'm in! I don't know how I've missed all of this, but this is so cool and yes, I want to do this. Thank, Thank you. you. Can someone help this young person? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. You look great, awesome. You, you look great, by the way. So what's your question? Uh, my question is, uh, which person did you like playing better, Toriel or the Wasp? It's a tough question. Okay. I'm going to answer this very diplomatically. <laughs> I enjoyed the process of living and breathing Middle Earth for a year, more than almost anything else in my entire career. And as a fan and an audience member, I could watch either Ant-Man film over and over ad nauseum. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Waz. I mean, it's certainly, um, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp, like, it's important. And, it, and it, it feels important because we're seeing like the truly like the first female superhero that we're, we're getting out of the MCU. So, you know, yeah, I mean like, and, and of course we have Black Widow as well, but she didn't have superpowers, okay? Um, that importance must not have been lost on you, that, that you get to like wear the super suit and kick some butt. Well, I mean, obviously there, there are incredible, incredible women in the MCU, and I'm a personal, I have a huge crush on Okoye. She might be my favorite. Um, but being in the title and being the first titular, as they say, uh, female superhero in the MCU is an incredible honor, and it came at such an important time. And that might seem, from the outside, very calculated might seem like men at the top of a company thinking, oh, okay, now we're going to want movies about a woman, so let's put a woman in the title and uh, let's follow with the trend of you know, the Time's Up movement and moment. Um, but we started shooting this film about four months before the Harvey Expose broke. And we had been planning and writing and preparing this film 
for two years before that, and I was sent the title card two months before we started shooting. So I can attest to the fact that this was just in Kevin's heart. This is what he wanted to do. This was his conviction long before it became the thing to do. And I'm very proud of that, and, and I'm very proud that it, he was sort of, I think, as an artist, I think artists are often on the pulse of the common consciousness and where we're headed, and they're often prophetic. And I think you see that a lot in sci-fi, you see that a lot in fantasy, is that there's a lot of prophecy in those works. And I feel like Kevin is still an artist, and in his heart he just felt something in his bones and he followed that, and then this movie came out at a very important moment, and I'm very proud to be at the helm of that. I wanted to ask if you had had a background in athletics and how you prepared physically for the, the archery and martial arts and things like that. Um, I have always been, since, you know, I was, when I remember when I was eight years old and discovering, realizing on the playground playing boys chase girls that none of the boys could catch me. Yeah. <laughs> And I had this really, really long braid. This is a total off-topic side note, but I had this hugely long braid, and it would flap behind me because I would run so fast. So the only way they could catch me is if they grabbed the end of my braid, and I would go feet overhead every time it happened. But you know, that sort of began a lifetime of um, feeling the thrill of using this instrument that I've been graciously given to uh, be as alive as I can be. And, and so I've always been somebody who loved fitness. I was a soccer player in high school and I was I was the only 15 year old at the school weightlifting gym, <laughs> lifting weights and um, I've just always really loved and cared about this instrument, this body, because um, it's a gift and I, I never want to take it for granted. So when I prepared for any role, really usually it was about learning techniques a lot more than getting in shape. Um, it was a lot about learning how to shoot a bow and arrow, which I kind of knew a bit about before, um, and uh, you know, I'd never done Muay Thai or MMA or you know anything like that that they were sort of giving me a basic training for for the wasps. So it was much more about techniques and movements than you, know, you see some stories like, and then I spent two years getting ready for this role. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't so much like that. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. It's an honor Hi. to meet you. Um, so my question. Is I've noticed the trend of a lot of female superheroes like Black Widow, Captain Marvel, and now the Wasp. And I know that the MCU produced by Marvel Studios has become such a big like enterprise. So my main question was: if you were given the opportunity to have a Wasp movie, would you be in it? Like a standalone movie? I would do anything I was told. <laughs> I'd like the MCU and I'd like to stay, um, but I, I actually don't like the idea of a Wasp standalone film because Ant-Man and the Wasp, since the very beginning in the comic books, were always a team. And yeah. really they're kind of one of the only proper and true teams in the MCU, um, otherwise it's mostly a lot of individuals. Um, and I love the team aspect of it. I love watching the interplay between Wasp and Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. I, I, for me, it's the most fun part of the film. And so, I don't love the idea of breaking them up, except yep. if there was an all-female Avengers film. Yeah! Oh, Woo! Thank you. And then I'm in. I, I mean, I'm sure, you know, you've been asked this a million times already. I haven't asked you this, but uh, of course in the comics, uh, the Wasp is known for having so many cool costumes. This is not speculation, this is not spoiler, but you personally, would you be interested in kind of switching up the duds a little bit with each appearance? In the original comic book, she was a fashion designer. Janet Van Dyne was a fashion designer, and she loved to change her costume. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with a woman liking clothes. I like clothes. But I, for me, it would be such a distraction from Hope being a very serious, no-nonsense scientist who really I don't think she 
cares that much about what she puts on her body. You know, I think that when she goes to the store, she chooses things that are her practical, whatever she needs to get done, that's what goes on her body. And she goes home and gets done what has to be done. So, if Hope was a fashion designer, okay, maybe, that'd be fun, but she's a scientist, okay. so, no. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, um, if Disney asked you to do um, to cross over into the Star Wars saga, would you do it because of your connection with J.J. Abrams? When J.J. was first announced that he was going to do his first Star Wars film, I reached out to his producing partner for the first time ever since Lost ended. I've never requested anything of them ever before. I said, I want to be Leia. Make me Leia. <laughs> Thank you. You're Thank you. Hi there. Hello. Oh. Oh, by the way, they said Carrie Fisher's going to be there. I was like, oh. <laughs> um, I made a perfect fast with Florida Rings and The Hobbit. Um, my question is, uh, was it hard or easy to just be elvish in The Hobbit, or was it hard? The what? hardest thing about speaking Elvish and the Hobbit was getting the intonation right because you can memorize a bunch of sounds but then to actually make it sound like conversation is a whole other thing you have to really make sure that you actually know what those sounds represent and that they don't just become a blur of noise to you so that was the hardest part thank you I want to I want to ask Rodrigo a question real quick because I mean with your background I know you've also you've been a art professor as well you've taught school right yeah exactly yeah. so when you come to a comic con and where we're talking about what's your background do you have any kind of nerdy background with this or is this just kind of alien speak right now no I have I, I love Lord of the Rings for me it's just a, one of the best trilogy ever made. And I know everything, and I, I used to watch also the making of of the of those movies. And I was, as the same fascination that I had for the movies, I had for the making the movie. Yeah. So I saw all the miniatures, the the art that they did, and everything, and I was like, that that's one of the things that I like about this pop culture and. All the superhero movies. There are there are so many artists that works in those movies. They are they are great, and I think maybe they are not in an exhibition with paintings on the walls, but they are there in these movies doing all those amazing things that we believe is real. When you see Thanos in a, in the Avengers, you know there is a person there. It's not, and there is a bunch of artists that created that so you can believe and the story can be told like that. So it's also an art thing. So that's why I love it. I love it, all the superhero movies also. Whenever we're signing and somebody comes up in a costume and I don't know what it is, I go, Rodrigo, <laughs> what costume is that? Because <laughs> he knows all of it. Because he's a con-goer and has been a con-goer for how many years? Yes, it's six, six years ago. Yeah. And it's in, and I like to, and and I can memorize images very quickly. So I know if the costume is from movie one or two, if it's the Mark Forty Two, you know. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's easy for me to see somebody in a costume, even if I never saw the movie. Just if I see an image, yeah, I, I can tell it. That's that's impressive, actually. Yeah. Hi there. How are you? Hi. So, on the subject of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, the world of Middle Earth is full of uh, rich and memorable characters. Would you say that you are your own favorite character in that franchise? And if not, who is? Huh. <laughs> No, I wouldn't say I'm a, I, it's pretty hard for me to be my own favorite character. I'm very self-critical when I watch myself. Um, who is my favorite character in the Hobbit trilogy? I think it was Thorin. I was I was really crushing on Thorin when I was watching those movies. And you know, Richard Armitage is pretty great, but Thorin is a whole other level. Um, 
I, I loved the dwarves. I, I, I was a huge fan of the original book. I, it was my favorite book when I was 13 years old, and I just was so invested in those dwarves and in their story. And this is a horrible thing to admit, but I sort of was like, ah, enough with the elves already. Get back to the dwarves. I want to see the, I want to see the dwarves. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. Hello. Uh, between Lost, The Hobbit, and Ant-Man and the Wasp, what was your uh, most favorite to work on and why? My, my favorite one to work on was The Hobbit, and I think it was just such a fantasy fulfillment for me, because I had been fantasizing about being a woodland elf for so long when I was a little girl. I had lived in Middle Earth, I'd read you know, the entire trilogy in The Hobbit, and I started reading The Submarillion, I never made it through that one when I was young. But um, I, I think it was just a, also a very ideal time in my life. I just fallen madly in love with my partner. We just had a baby. I got the call, can you come to New Zealand in two months and start shooting when I was laid up in bed having given birth. Um, so I was still blissed out on, you know, birth drug, like the birth hormones and whatever's going on up here when you have a baby. And it was a beautiful time, New Zealand. And if any of you have gone and visited and seen The Hobbit and the Shire, and, you know, it's like, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, after working in Hawaii to working in New Zealand, you have a knack for picking the good locations. And then I ended up in Atlanta, Georgia. Right. <laughs> uh, we only have time for probably like two more questions, guys. Um, but I like your costume and I like your one of those questions. Hi. Hi. So, I'll be doing my first ever audition for a play this fall. I've never auditioned for anything before, so do you have any advice for me? Good question. Well, I can give you a very practical piece of advice, which is that if you have stage fright, if you, when you're backstage waiting to go on, if you have stage fright, the best way to eliminate the physical reality of stage fright is to do push-ups. It sounds crazy. But apparently what happens is your blood starts like not gutting up into your brain and that's what's really going on. And when you do push-ups, you push blood into the extremities of your body and the nausea goes away and like a lot of the nerves go away. But the main advice that I would give to any artist who is starting out, especially an actor, because it's very particularly difficult to hang on to this as an actor, is to be yourself. Um, I bring myself to every role that I do and sometimes I'm, I think, I'm not a very good actor because I do that because it's like all me somewhere inside of there. But then I realize that I'm all I've got. And if I try to be something I'm not, then it's going to read as, as false and fake and people are going to not believe me. So just be you and guarantee you is the best thing that you can be on that stage. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Hi there. Hi. Um, my parents showed me Lost and it's a show that really brings me and my family together. Um, and I just wanted to know, out of like filming Lost and then doing like The Hobbit, if you had a favorite set that you were on, like a location? Well, first of all, I want to tell you that what you just said is the thing that has always made me the happiest and most proud to have been a part of Lost. It has brought so many families together, so many people together. I, I meet people, I talk to people all the time who are like, I met my spouse because we were on a lost forum together. Or, you know, my children and I had never felt more bonded than when we were watching Lost together. And that just, it just makes me so happy because that show was so uh, wonderful and grueling to make. You know, we worked really hard and um, we did it for six years. And so thank you for telling me that. And then, you know, favorite sets, favorite locations. Um, Kualoa Ranch on Oahu is where we shot a lot of the pilots. Remember the pilot of Lost um, when uh, there was a small group of us who hiked up the mountains and we found the walkie-talkie and then Charlie goes, guys, where are we? You know that part? That was the first time I'd ever been to Kualoa Ranch and it's just this magical, incredible, enormous, sacred place that is full of pulsing aloha. You can just feel the essence and the spirit of Hawaii in that valley. And so six years later, when the show came to a close, and I was overwhelmed with emotion for what our crew had given to us as 
a cast that came were strangers to the land and a lot of them were locals. I took everyone back up into that mountain and we had a party to be all parties. We lit up the whole valley all night and, and, the, and the crew filled that valley with so much aloha. I felt like I was vibrating and it was just a very special place. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are out of time, but I do want to end on a... Sorry, I talk no, a lot. No, it's okay. I actually want to end on a Spooker Walker's uh, question. First off, uh, I know you've been selling a lot of books at your table. There's still some over there, I believe, right? So you guys can head back over there and pick up a book. That gentleman has one. He's, he's holding it in the air, both of them. Um, but really, I guess my final question is, we, we talk about... And of the Wasp, we talk about loss and everything, but from both of you, when you see this creation of yours on the big screen and you see people showing up and asking questions about it, just kind of in the panel by talking about the pride that you have in seeing it in other people's hands and in creating this thing out of your own mind. Talk yeah, about yeah, the, I just want to talk yeah, about the pride. The pride, yeah. Um, well, I'm a mom. First of all, and you know, I read books to my kids every day, and I really believe that what they're reading and just reading period is forming who they're going to become. And right now, um, it's there's a it's a tricky time. Like I feel like I don't know if you guys feel this, but things feel precarious in the world. Things feel a lot more hopeless than I think they felt for a long while in this country and just globally. And I feel like whatever I can do to invest in children is something that is going to be very meaningful to me. I used to think maybe I would be a teacher. I used to work with kids, you know, all through my teen and 20 years, or 20s, through my 20s, kids camps and Sunday school, and, and I volunteered at, you know, juvenile detention centers, and I just, I love children, and I believe in children, and I think often children are told, when you're older, you're going to change the world. You are the future. But I actually don't think that's accurate. I think it's right now they have the ideas to change the world. Right now is when they're, they're most powerful. These little tiny beings have so much wisdom inside of them. And so I, you know, I just, I respect children and I'm proud to give them something that hopefully they will um, be stimulated by. Their imaginations will get firing because it's very imaginative and magical, and and they will start creating their own stories and their own narratives for their for their own future and their own world. And for me, I'm so proud that the book is out. It's so happy to see it. 